We have chronicled quite well the difficulties on international climate discussions, yeah. getting the world to agree on reducing our carbon emissions. It seems that the process hasn't been as difficult to get these major countries and major economies to agree on clean technology, on things like carbon capture and storage for burning coal, for electric vehicles. Why is there so much common ground? Why is this easier? It's an interesting point, Tyler. There's been a lot of positive momentum in this process, and I think that it shows that countries working on clean energy can find things that they agree on. They can find ways to move forward. They see the opportunity in clean energy. I mean, we are not going to succeed in the 21st century using 20th century technologies. That's an insight that's, I think, driving a lot of Americans, but no surprise, it's also animating people around the world. Just last week, the International Energy Agency uh, announced that China is now the hungriest energy consumer in the entire world, surpassing the U.S. for the first time ever. It's also number one in terms of carbon emissions. Is this the pivotal relationship going forward? Well, it's one of them, and China is extremely important for all kinds of obvious reasons. What's happening in China is shaping the world. And I'll tell you, I've been to China a number of times uh, since I took this job, and which I'm honored to be in. And the Chinese are investing heavily in clean energy. I have been over there. I have seen the bullet train. I've seen huge investments in uh, lithium-ion battery factories. They're, they're building long-distance transmission lines, 1,000 kilovolts, state-of-the-art here at 765 kilovolts. They've got photovoltaic uh, uh, factories. They're investing in energy efficiency. China is investing in the clean energy revolution. They intend to be one of the world leaders. United States need to be, needs to be a world leader as well. Secretary Chu and also Secretary Gary Locke from Commerce took a very high profile trip to China last summer. Yep. Uh, are, is there a disconnect though between the way we do business here and the way that China does business in terms of making these game changing decisions for the energy sector? Well, they're different. Of course, there are big differences between our two cultures. Look, I, I think your question underscores the importance of the U.S. Congress passing comprehensive energy and climate legislation that puts us on a path towards the clean energy revolution. That means a price on carbon. That means giving the incentives for clean energy jobs that are going to help put thousands and actually millions of Americans back to work. We have made a fantastic start on that with the Recovery Act. The Recovery Act funding for clean energy that President Obama signed in February of 2009 is already putting millions of people back to work, many of them in the clean energy economy. But we need to keep up that momentum with comprehensive energy and climate legislation. David, final question. Where do we go from here with these there, international partnerships if and when domestic policy is put into place? Well, say for this meeting, we were very excited to have two countries come forward and offer to host the next version, the next one. So, so there will be another one of these clean energy ministerials next year in, of all places, the United Arab Emirates. They are investing in renewable energy. They want to transition their economy, they say, away from a reliance on hydrocarbons to an investment in renewable energy. So after the United Arab Emirates hosts in uh, 2011, the United Kingdom has offered to host the next one. So there's a lot of momentum in this process with countries coming together to promote clean energy. We really hope it's going to make a difference. It's so important for our children and grandchildren that it does.